The Twilight of Gods, from the Ring of the Nibelung by Richard Wagner. The synopsis is presented by Opera Inside, the online opera guide. The Roles Siegfried, son of Siegmund and Sieglinde. Brunhilde, Valkyrie and daughter of Wotan. Valtraute, Valkyrie and sister of Brunhilde. Gunther, king of the Gibikum. Gutrune, sister of Gunther. Alberic, Nibelung. Hagen, Gibi king and son of Alberic. Norns, women of fate. Welgunde, Flossilde and Woglinde, mermaids and Rhine maidens, guardians of the Rhine gold. On the Valkyrie rock. Three Norns prophesy that the reign of the gods will end and their kingdom will go up in flames. It's dawning. Brunhilde and Siegfried step out of the cave where they spent their night of love. Brunhilde says goodbye to Siegfried, who wants to set off for new deeds. Brunhilde wants to wait for his return, and they exchange love tokens. Brunhilde gives him her horse Grane, and Siegfried gives her the ring, whose meaning he does not know. The two swear eternal fidelity to each other and Siegfried boards a raft that will carry him up the Rhine. On the banks of the Rhine, in the castle of Gibikum. Gunther, the king of the Gibikum, is in front of his castle. With him are his sister Gutrune and their half-brother Hagen, the son of Alberic. Hagen has inherited from his father the hatred for the gods and greed for the ring. To get the ring, he cunningly advises a king to marry Brunhilde to improve the tarnished reputation of his reign. But to do this, he needs Siegfried, who is the only one strong enough to break through the fire to her sleeping quarters. To win him over, Gutrune shall take Siegfried as her husband. When Gutrune doubts whether she can win Siegfried, Hagen reminds her of the Potion of Oblivion. As soon as she meets him, she is to hand him the potion and he will forget Brunhilde. As Siegfried passes the castle with his raft, Hagen calls to him and invites him to join them. When Siegfried enters the castle, Gunther welcomes him. Proudly Siegfried shows Gunther his magic helmet and his sword. He tells that he was able to wrest the ring from the dragon, and that Brunhilde now owns it. Gutrune enters the hall with a drinking horn. Siegfried drinks the potion of oblivion. The effect sets in, and Siegfried wants to marry Gutrune. Siegfried asks Gunther if he has a wife. He answers that no woman has suited him yet. But there is a woman living on a rock, protected by high fire, whom he desires. The way to her is impossible, the fire would kill him immediately. Siegfried offers to help him. With the magic helmet he could take the shape of Gunther and win Brunhilde for him. Gunther accepts joyfully and the two drink euphorically blood brotherhood. Hagen is satisfied. His plan to win back the ring for his father Alberic seems to succeed. On the Valkyrie's rock. Brunhilde sits lonely on the Valkyrie's rock and looks at Siegfried's ring in tender remembrance. Suddenly she hears thunder. Gladly she greets Valtraute, her Valkyrie's sister. Brunhilde is happy to see her despite Wotan's spell. In a dark voice, Valtraute tells of the gloomy atmosphere in Valhalla. Wotan has returned from his long hike bitterly. His spear was in ruins. He reported that the end of the gods is near, and the only salvation will be if the ring is returned to the Rhine Maidens. But Brunhilde is not prepared to give up Siegfried's token of love, even if this would seal the fate of the gods. Desperately, Valtraute begs her to return the ring. But her mind is made up and she sends her sister away. Suddenly the sky turns red and she thinks to hear Siegfried's horn call. Brunhilde hurries towards him. She recedes in horror when she sees a stranger. In the name of the Gibi Kung, Siegfried in Gunther's shape demands the right to take her as his wife. Brunhilde desperately tries to fend him off, but he brutally tears the ring from her finger, and forces a pale Brunhilde into the cave to consummate the marriage. On the banks of the Rhine, in the castle of the Gibi Kung. In the moonlight Hagen sleeps in front of the hall of Gibi Kung. Alberic appears before the eyes of the sleeping Hagen. He admonishes him to win back the ring. Hagen swears to it and Alberic leaves him. The next morning. Siegfried appears and announces 
that he appeared at Brunhild days in Gunther's shape, and could change with Gunther unnoticed in the fog of dawn. He assures Gutrune that he had not touched Brunhild day and announces the imminent arrival of Gunther and Brunhild day. Cheering. Gutrune agrees to the imminent wedding. Hagen calls the people of Gibi King together to offer the king and his bride a worthy reception and to celebrate the upcoming double wedding. Gunther is received magnificently by the people. Brunhilde follows him. She is pale with humiliation and she has her eyes lowered. Gunther proudly presents his bride, the daughter of the gods. Siegfried appears with the ring on his finger and Gutrune on his arm. Stunt, Brunhilde sees Siegfried. When she speaks to him in a trembling voice, she realizes that Siegfried no longer knows her. When she notices the ring on Siegfried's hand, which Gunther allegedly snatched from her, she realizes with a shudder the wrong game and accuses Siegfried of robbery. Siegfried claims to have snatched it from the dragon. Spurred on by Hagen, Brunhilde now accuses Siegfried of treachery. She tells of having consummated the marriage with Siegfried and thus declares Gunther to be the betrayed husband. To protect him, Siegfried claims that he never touched her. Brunhilde repeats that she has consummated the marriage with Siegfried. All eyes now are on Siegfried. In order to protect his blood brother, he swears his innocence on the point of Hagen's spear and thus commits the perjury of never having touched her. The turmoil is great when Brunhilde, for her part, swears an oath to have spoken the truth. Siegfried can reassure Gunther and the guests with difficulty. He calls upon them to accompany him to the feast. Brunhilde, Hagen and the deeply ashamed Gunther stay behind. Brunhilde feels powerless at the mercy of the forces. Hagen offers to avenge her and wants to know how he can defeat Siegfried. Brunhilde tells him that Siegfried is invincible in battle, and that he is only vulnerable at one point on his back. Hagen turns to Gunther, who is paralyzed in deep shame, and suggests that he kill Siegfried. Gunther hesitates to let the blood of his blood brother flow. When Brunhilde mocks him and Hagen offers him the ring, Gunther agrees, and they decide to disguise Siegfried's death as a hunting accident. In a wooded valley, on the passing Rhine. The Rhine maidens swim in the river and mourn the loss of the gold. They eagerly await a hero to bring the gold back to them. When Siegfried appears on the bank, he complains that he has not yet been able to hunt down any prey. The mermaids see the ring on his hand and offer to help him hunt, and in return they demand the ring. Siegfried refuses at first, but agrees when the mermaids tease him as a miser. They warn him of the power and curse of the ring. Only if he handed over the ring to them could his evil fate be averted. Now Siegfried realizes the value of the ring, and he is seized by the greed for power. He thinks he is invincible and puts the ring back on his finger. The maidens prophesy that he will be killed today. But Siegfried does not want to be intimidated by the mermaids and leaves the place. The mermaids make their way to Brunhild Day. Siegfried finds back to the hunting party. They take a break. Hagen gives Siegfried wine. The latter steps to Gunther with the cup and tries to cheer him up. Hagen adds herbs to the wine that bring the past back to life in Siegfried. He pours more wine and asks Siegfried to tell about himself. Siegfried tells his story. With even more wine Hagen loosens his tongue. Now Siegfried remembers Brunhilde and tells ecstatically how he took her as his wife. With this he has admitted the breach of faith. Hagen points to Wotan's two black ravens that have appeared. Siegfried turns around and looks at them, whereupon Hagen reaches for the spear. Gunther, who has now seen through Hagen's game, tries in vain to stop him. And Hagen stabs Siegfried from behind with a spear. The dead Siegfried is carried to the halls of Gibi King with a solemn escort. In the castle Gutrune awaits the arrival of Siegfried. Snide, Hagen shows her her dead husband. Gunther accuses Hagen of murder, whereupon Hagen demands the ring as a reward. When Gunther refuses this request, Hagen stabs him with his spear. He wants to snatch the ring from Siegfried's dead body, but to everyone's horror Siegfried's hand raises threateningly. Brunhilde takes the ring. 
She has learned everything from the Rhine Maidens and instructs the Gibi King to build a pyre. In deep sadness, she sinks into the sight of the dead Siegfried. She goes to the river, takes the ring off her hand and gives it back to the Rhine Maidens. The Ravens of Wotan appear. Brunhilde sends them to Walhalla to announce the Twilight of Gods. Back in the castle, Brunhilde lights the logs under the laid out Siegfried, and rides with her horse Grainy into the fire, to unite with Siegfried and death. The fire engulfs the castle, and the Rhine overflows its banks. Hagen jumps into the river to snatch the ring from the Rhine daughters, but the mermaids pull him down. Rejoicing, Flossilde holds up the ring. In the distance a glow breaks out in the heaven, the burning Valhalla, which has been lit by Loge. With the apocalypse the end of the world of gods has come. www.operainside.com All about operas. Learn more about this great opera. With interesting facts and great YouTube videos. Visit us.